Okay, so in the last video, we were able to display the names of all the buckets on our homepage. And then we also have, have had this files page. Um, so this is actually tied to the bucket that is set in our configuration, our, our, our environment variables. However, when we return um, to the buckets list, it'd be nice if we can just select one of these buckets and then have it take us over to the files page to display all the files that are in that bucket. So that's what we'll be doing in this video. We'll use sessions um, to change buckets to be able to store which um, bucket we've selected in, in a session variable. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to make some adjustments to our homepage, um, our template, uh, which is index.html inside of our templates folder here. Uh, what I'm gonna do is like just similar to on the files page, um, create a form for every single bucket. So let's go ahead and create a new column. Okay, so what we're gonna do is for our form action, we're going to um, use the URL for helper method. And then we're gonna use our index route. Um, so what we're gonna end up doing is when the method, when it's a Post requests, um, well, basically it'll be on this form submission. If it's a get request, it'll just load the homepage um, as it does now. So we'll go ahead and create a hidden input. And we'll give this a name of bucket. And so for the value, what we need to do is pass in the bucket name. Uh, so it's gonna be uh, this right here, this um, basically a, like a dictionary key lookup. Um, the buckets, when we got the data from AWS, it's a little bit different uh, than it is for the files on the files page. And so we're going to give it a, um, our icon, a class of FA archive, that was like the closest thing that I could find um, to a button um, on the Font Awesome website. So will go ahead and save this. And then if we rerun our page, um, our button should show up. Actually, we need, we're missing the uh, table header. So let's just create a blank uh, TH tag. And we refresh that. Now it looks a little bit better. So we do have a a button here, it will submit the form, but we have nothing in our uh, routes to handle this. So if we go back into app.py, um, so our, here's our index route. So we need to pass in the methods list. And so we're gonna accept get and post. So by default, if we, if we do not pass in this uh, list, it's going to only accept get by default. Um, so we have to pass this in to accept more than one uh, request method. Okay, so since we're gonna store, store this in a session variable, we need to import session. And inside of our index method, so we need to set up a conditional statement uh, to check which request method is being used. So if we're using a post method, let's just grab the bucket from the request object. So we're gonna set a session key of bucket. And so we're gonna return as a redirect and we're gonna redirect to the files page. So the next thing that we're gonna to need to do is if we just redirect to our files page, um, there's nothing checking the session to see if a different bucket from what we have set in our environment variables is actually set. Um, so we need to handle that. So for that, we need to go over to resources.py. And so we have this get bucket method here. So this would be a good place to check um, to see if the bucket session is set so actually we don't need pretty print anymore so let's change this so from the flask object we're going to import session so get three resource um, that's not going to change at all 
Um, so right here, we can just check and see if bucket is in our session variable. So we just need to adjust this. Um, so this is going to be dynamic. Um, if it's set in the session, we're going to use the bucket from the session. If not, we're going to use our constant, which is the uh, default bucket. So we need to pass whatever bucket we set it through as our return value. And I did notice another problem that we had in our filters. Uh, so I made a mistake right here. This is not supposed to be um, have any parentheses. So let's go ahead and fix that. Otherwise, if we don't have a MIME type um, and it throws an error, it's just going to crash the whole page. Okay, so now, okay, so we do have a bit of an issue. Um, so when we indented, so we need a backslash. Okay. Um, okay, so what I have down here is basically a bucket that I created um, a while back. Uh, this was another blog post I did on just creating a static site um, using an Amazon S3 bucket, a static website. Um, so I do have a post on that, uh, but for now, we'll just uh, take a look at that. Um, it's just H HTML5 boilerplate, um, just a basic HTML page that doesn't really do anything, um, but it was mostly just for that other tutorial. Okay, so now everything is set in the session. We, we're getting the correct files for a different bucket. Um, so we do have a few issues here. We have some markdown files and it doesn't know the file type. Um, we also have that for our dot files. So we can clean up our filter a bit. Uh, so let's do that next. So inside of our key error, so we'll do everything inside this block. We'll set a uh, file type um, and then give it a default of unknown. So let's, let's check for our dot files first. Um, we're just gonna we're just gonna give that a file type of um, text. Actually, we want file info. We want the check the very first letter to see if it's a period. Um, that's just going to be one of our um, configuration files. And we want to make sure we don't have a file extension because um, if you look at if we look at these files, um, it's just a dot like dot ht access dot git ignore dot editor config. Um, so we're not going to have a file extension because the first character is a dot. She meant a semicolon, a colon, not a semicolon. So we're going to just set a file type of text. And so what we need to do here is return our file type. So if we go back and refresh, um, so that updated that. Um, so now we're showing text for all of these. The ones that we still have unknown for are all the markdown files. Uh, so let's um, set that, let's fix that next. So back in our filters folder, um, what I'm gonna do is set up a dictionary lookup for additional file types. And although we're just gonna have one for right now, if we want to add more later, it's, it make, this makes it very easy. And we'll say .md for markdown. And we'll, so we'll get that a uh, type of text slash markdown. I'm not sure if that's an official MIME type. Um, it's not in our MIME types app that's being imported using our library. I know at some point that they were talking about um, giving it that specific MIME type. I don't know what the status of that is, but um, we're just gonna go along with it just for now. Okay, so we're checking here to see if it's a dot file. So I'll add a new conditional statement. Uh, we'll check if file extension and additional additional file types. Um, so we want to basically look through the keys. So basically, when we get to this point, it's going to be .md if it's one of those markdown files. So we need to check the dictionary key. And um, this is checking it and turning it into a list of just the keys. And so we we'll set the file type. Uh, so we want to use the key lookup, so the file extension, which will be .md. 
Um, so that should give us text slash markdown. And go ahead and save that. And let's go back to the browser and refresh. And yeah, so we have text markdown. Okay, so this concludes part six. What we've been able to do here is select a bucket from our homepage. And then once we click on that, we can view the contents of any bucket that's in our um, Amazon S3 account. Thank you for watching.